Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to be talking about reversible causes of hypothyroidism. This is important because many patients assume that when they get hypothyroidism or when they've been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, that they will have to take thyroid medications like levothyroxine and Synthroid for the rest of their lives. And there are many cases in which that is true. However, as you will soon find out, there are also many cases in which that's not the case because their condition, whatever caused it, is a potential reversible or potentially reversible cause of hypothyroidism. And as a thyroid patient, you must know the difference because you may be placed on thyroid medication forever when the reality is you don't have to take it forever. And we know this because emerging information and research is suggesting that up to 30% of thyroid patients who are taking medications like level thyroxine, when they're taken off these medications, their thyroid returns back to normal. So that implies that yes, they may have needed it for some period of time, but up to 30% of the cases, they don't have to take it forever. All right, so that's why this is so important. Now let's get started here. We're gonna talk about number one. Number one is important and I put it here intentionally because it is both an irreversible cause of hypothyroidism as well as a reversible cause. And whether or not it's reversible or irreversible depends on the severity of the condition. So if you have something called end-stage Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which means Hashimoto has, Hashimoto's has been in your body for decades usually and has resulted in permanent damage to the thyroid gland, that's sort of it. You're gonna have to take thyroid medication forever. But if you have mild or moderate, or if you catch your disease very early, usually within the first couple years, there's a pretty good chance that you can put your Hashimoto's into remission. And if that's the case, then yeah, it is reversible because we're talking about the hypothyroid state. You won't be able to get rid of the immune dysfunction if you have Hashimoto's necessarily, you can suppress it, um, but you can, in some cases, return your thyroid function back to normal, which means that that hypothyroid state goes away, and so you don't need thyroid medication. So Hashimoto's both reversible and irreversible depending on the circumstance. And if, by the way, if you have questions about um, your particular case, let me know and I can kind of give you an idea as to whether it may be reversible or not. One quick and easy way to do this is by looking at a thyroid ultrasound. If you look at the shape and the size of your thyroid gland, you can, you can get a decent idea, it's not perfect, but you can get a decent idea as to how much function is remaining there. Number two, reversible causes of hypothyroidism, number two is stress. This is a really big one because a lot of thyroid patients, perhaps even you uh, listening to this right now, they were diagnosed with hypothyroidism after a really stressful event. Now, based on my experience, the two most common that I've seen would be divorce, which is obviously very stressful, and then also the death of a loved one, someone close to you. In my experience, these are two uh, major causes of precipitating the hypothyroid state in patients. Now, it is true that these situations result in a true hypothyroid state. So if you were to check your labs, you would look hypothyroid. But what's interesting is that the stress caused by these events, it doesn't last forever on the body. It does take a toll on the body for a short period of time, usually months, sometimes years. But after that, after a length of time, the body usually recovers and you can get back to normal. But if you start on your thyroid medication right after the stressful event, and you never attempt to go off of it, your body could have recovered, but you're still taking thyroid medication, so you'd never know. If you wanna know if your thyroid was caused by stress, you just need to think about when you were diagnosed and if that was temporally related to the stressful event that you underwent. So for instance, if you had a divorce, let's say, and then six months later you were diagnosed with hypothyroidism, well, that's, you know, that's, that's pretty close together. That suggests that there's maybe a linkage between that event and your diagnosis of hypothyroidism. So if you can remember, and you can go back in time, it, sometimes it's hard, right? Because if you've had it for 10 plus years, you can't always remember. But if you can go back and think what was happening in your, in your life when you were diagnosed, that can get a lot, give you a lot of helpful information. Number three, we have illness. So both acute and chronic illnesses can result in hypothyroid labs, we'll say, all right? because. This one's a little bit confusing because illness can cause something called euthyroid 6 syndrome. And in euthyroid 6 syndrome, your thyroid looks like, well, your labs look like your hypothyroid, but it's really just the response of your body to the illness that it's facing. 
And generally speaking, the more severe the illness, like for instance, if you were put in the ICU because you had a really bad case of pneumonia or maybe a really bad car accident or something like that, um, hopefully those don't happen, but if you were, your doctors know not to check your thyroid labs because it will you will look hypothyroid. But they know it's not a real hypothyroidism uh, because that will go away once the body recovers. That's just your body's response to the trauma. It diverts uh, energy and resources away from your, your metabolism into healing your body or fixing your immune system or fighting an infection, whatever the case may be. However, sometimes if somebody doesn't know what they're looking at and maybe they order their labs because you have a lot of chronic infections, or not chronic infections, but chronic diseases, then it can you can be incorrectly diagnosed with hypothyroidism because your labs look like you're hypothyroid. The reality is your body's just dealing with other issues. So illness, in this case, if you can get rid of the illness, then yes, your body will return to normal after some period of time. It depends though, this, this gets a little tricky because you can actually end up with true hypothyroidism if you have a lot of chronic medical conditions, um, especially like obesity and metabolic syndrome and high blood pressure and diabetes and so on. When you start stacking all of these diseases on top of each other, you will end up with a true hypothyroidism. But before you end up with that true hypothyroid state, you will end up with a euthyroid 6 syndrome, which just looks like you're hypothyroid, but, if you're, but you're really not. Again, that one's a little bit confusing, but I want to include it there because that is something that will matter to some of you listening to this. Number four, we have iodine deficiency. Now, iodine deficiency by itself is such an important nutrient for the body that if iodine levels are low, it can cause a full-blown hypothyroid state. This used to be very common back in the day. It really isn't that common nowadays. In fact, I would go as far as to say that most patients in developed countries, um, they don't have true iodine deficiency. They don't have a big enough iodine deficiency to cause a true hypothyroid state, but they are. They don't usually have an optimal amount of iodine such that it reduces thyroid function usually by let's say 10 to 15%. So this is why I still think iodine supplementation is beneficial for many of you listening to this because it can still boost your thyroid function by a little bit. But if you imagine going from, let's say, 100% thyroid function down to 90, that's not really gonna cause a full-blown hypothyroid state in an otherwise healthy individual. But if you have thyroid function and you're already running at a deficit, this can just stack on top of that and now you will become truly hypothyroid. But even though it's not very common, um, it's still worth understanding because of the connection it has with thyroid function more generally. This one, number five, is becoming much more common, especially nowadays, and that is dieting, or we'll put calorie restriction here, CR, and that is because both states can result in a true hypothyroid state and also a temporary hypothyroid state, depending on how long it's occurred and how many times you've done it. So for instance, the more times you've undergone yo-yo diets and maybe crash diets and things of that nature, HCG used to be really popular back in the day, and that was one that would cause this problem. It would make you look like you were hypothyroid, but your body could recover, your metabolism could recover after a period of time. That could be months to years. It does sometimes does take a while, or it can take a while, but when your body recovers, your hypothyroidism will return to normal. So just be very cautious um, if you are dieting or using calorie restriction, don't overdo it. They're still beneficial depending on the degree and the severity of what you're doing. I've been seeing a lot of patients who are over fasting recently. Um, I would say recent in the past several years as fasting has become more popular. As long as you're fasting correctly, it's absolutely safe and beneficial for both your thyroid and your overall health. But when you start to overfast, it can cause problems. So do be aware of that if you're using these fasting protocols. Number six, we have prescription medications. These are really good because, well, good and bad. Uh, unfortunately, there are many medications which interfere with thyroid function. Fortunately, there are very few which cause full-blown hypothyroidism. Now, the two that I wanna focus on here include amiodarone and lithium. Well, gotta finish spelling that. Lithium. These are not very common prescription medications, but if you're taking them, you usually need to be taking them. Amiodarone is used for heart conditions, and lithium is often used for bipolar disorder. Now, they can also they can be both permanent and um, non-permanent. So it depends on the how much you're taking how, and how long you've taken it for. In general, if you're using these medications for a long period of time, they can sometimes cause permanent thyroid permanent hypothyroidism or permanent thyroid damage. 
There are also lots of other prescription medications like acid blockers, um, antidepressants, and even narcotics or pain medications which suppress thyroid function, but that's usually temporary and it's usually not a sufficient amount to cause full-blown hypothyroidism. But again, keep that in mind if you're someone who already is on the fence with their hypothyroid state. If you already have hypothyroidism, then you start taking these medications, it may be enough to actually push you over the edge. And then lastly, other nutrient deficiencies. And this one is really common. I'll kind of go over this uh, at a high level view once we're done here to give you a better idea of what to specifically look for. But other nutrient deficiencies can also lead, in addition to iodine deficiency, can lead to hypothyroidism. Now, vitamin A is not very common in, uh, in the developed world, but it's very important. Vitamin A all by itself is enough to cause hypothyroidism, a uh, vitamin A deficiency, I should say. Iron is common in women who are menstruating because they're losing they're losing blood and they're, therefore they're losing iron. Zinc is common in the elderly, not usually common in, in younger the younger population. And selenium, if combined with iodine, again, is enough to cause a full-blown hypothyroid state. So these four nutrients are probably the most important in terms of their because they have a big impact on thyroid function and their defi a deficiency in any of these is enough to actually make it look like you're hypothyroid. If you have other deficiencies, it can still impact your thyroid, but usually not enough to push you over that edge. So in terms of the ones that you want to think about if, you're, if you've been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, definitely, definitely figure out if you've had Hashimoto's. That will help a big time because then you can know, well, have I had Hashimoto's for 20 years or not? Is it to the point where I could potentially reverse it? Figure out whether or not you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, then look at your nutrients. So look at iodine, look at these other nutrient deficiencies, take a look at your diet to see if that may be playing a role. And as you start figuring out what caused your thyroid disease, that will give you a better idea as to whether or not you have to take thyroid medication forever. And I think what you'll find out is many of you, but not all, many of you, many of you listening to this may be in a state where yes, you don't have to take your thyroid medication forever. And I have another video which goes over how to get off thyroid medication. So if you're interested in learning more about how to potentially get off thyroid medication, I'd recommend checking that video out next.